Do you ever feel like you're a hamster in a wheel when you're designing in Figma? Let me show you how to break free and streamline your workflow using component properties. Stay tuned. Hello everybody, how's it going? I'm your host Rupin from Jam, a designer with a passion for crafting beautiful UI designs. In this video, we'll be diving deep into the world of component properties and how they can supercharge your design process. We'll cover everything from the basics of component properties to advanced techniques that will blow your mind. And to make things even easier, I've broken the video down into 5 chapters so you can skip ahead in time if you're already familiar with some of the concepts. If you're new to this channel, here we do a bunch of cool shit on Jammed. You'll find a lot of design tips, tutorials and talks that might give you a new perspective on design. If you enjoyed this video, I'm certain you'll enjoy other Jam content as well and I'd highly encourage you to go take a look around. Without further ado, let's dive in. So why you might need component properties? Let me start by quickly stating the whole idea behind component properties. Basically, it is this little window over here that controls everything about your selected component. You can basically control any detail that you'd like ranging from hiding and showing your labels, changing titles, prices, images and a lot more. If you're familiar with content management system, the CMS, in development, it sort of functions similarly. Now as to why you'd want to use this is because oftentimes you will find yourself working on very large scale projects that will require you to have lots of cards and components. And having a system or an approach to how you handle multiple components will certainly make your life much easier. Also it would help explain to the developers what sort of content is written there. Is it something variable or is it static? You get what I'm saying here? The core reason you might actually want to use this is to mimic a realistic randomized e-commerce platform with a bunch of different products, perhaps also a music streaming platform or something, or anything that would have a lot of different variants and variables, but is fundamentally the same. Say for example, a label, a button, a card, a button, a card. As you could clearly tell, I can probably list up every single UI element on the planet. Using component properties will enhance your quality of life while designing, which basically makes you a faster and a more efficient UI designer. So let's actually start by creating the inner components. As a first step, we will have to create the inner components to make up the entire card. Sort of like the atoms and molecule system. Just to be clear from the start, the intentions of this video is to help you create your own card using your own component properties. So if you've landed on this video somehow expecting to learn how to design beautiful crisp cards, you might want to bounce off. However, I'm sure this video will benefit you also in many other ways. Let's say that you have your beautiful card already designed and you're planning to use it everywhere across multiple screens. Ideally, before you take that leap of faith and start using that card everywhere, you might want to make sure that your card is number one, flexible, two, editable, and three, it just doesn't stink, you know? So let's see what this card actually has here. So in this example, we have a few labels on the top left, a heart icon on the top right, a transparent image that is centered with our card structure, some slider below the image to swipe through. Then we have the title below the price and an add to card button. As you could clearly tell here, this card clearly stinks. There is no constraint set whatsoever, it scales pretty badly, nothing is grouped together and having just 4 of these cards on a single page would be a nightmare to edit. But we'll be fixing that very soon. Ideally, we'd want to create components of things that could be changed in the card, such as the labels on the top, the image itself, the heart icon and some variants of the sliders, etc. The text related stuff could be easily changed from the card component, however in order to avoid manual changing of the other components I had just mentioned, we will need to create them separately. Let's start with the labels on top. A label is essentially just a piece of text with some padding around and a background color. To do that, take this text out and simply press shift A to put the text inside of an auto layout. You will have a default padding of 10 pixels from all sides but we could change that. I'll change the vertical padding to 4 pixels and the horizontal padding to 8 pixels to match our initial design and I will give it a simple color. And to top it all off, I'll give it a roundness value of 4 pixels. Now I'll create a variant of this label and create one for the discounts. Let's duplicate this label and give it a reddish fill color and I'll change the content inside to 50% off. And as you could clearly see, the box resizes accordingly, that's because it's an auto layout frame. And that's how simple it is to create a label. So let's go ahead and take these two labels on a new frame that will contain all of the elements of our card. Create two separate components of the labels by pressing Ctrl Command plus Alter Option plus K and make sure that you're naming them correctly. It will make sense in a bit the naming part and how significant it is in Figma. 
I will be naming them label slash sale and label slash new for now. And it's very important to have the name of the parent identical, which in this case is label. What this allows me to do is when I want to reuse this component again, I can very easily go into the assets panel on top left and I will find my labels, which are called sale and new under the folder called label. So it basically works like a folder structure on your computer. This also allows for easily accessing the components within the file and changing them with one another. Let's for example, take these components as instances by copying them and pasting them. And by clicking on one, you will see this new section in the properties panel that allows you to locate and swap out components. Could you have done this simpler by using component variants? Of course, but I wanted to quickly demonstrate the idea of naming and how to swap components. So let's quickly put these two labels into an auto layout and set the spacing between them to 8 pixels. And I believe this part is done. Now for the heart button, let's take the heart out. Obviously you don't want to literally take the heart out and try to do the same thing. Create two versions of the heart, in which one is an outlined version in stroke and the other is filled to indicate that it's pressed. And create multiple components by clicking on the drop down up here and make sure that you're naming them properly, parent name and then the description. Here we have heart slash stroke. And if you go again and have a look at your assets panel, you should be able to see your heart folder there. If not, you should check your spelling. So let's drag our outlined heart and put it inside of our frame. Now for the images, let me show you first the old tedious process of manually changing images across different cards. First, you'll have to click on the new image, try to precisely click on this very tiny zone to highlight the entire fill of the image. And then you'll have to control command plus C to copy it. And then you'll have to search for your card again. And then you'll have to control command plus V to paste it. And finally, you'll have to delete the image below. In this process, I'm assuming that your image is perfect and it's not accidentally set to crop, which then you'll manually have to adjust the image to fit the new proportions of the box, which will even take more time. But there's a way to fix that. Basically, you turn your images into components the same way we've changed the previous labels and hearts. I basically have all the images that I styled and sized in a cohesive way, which you can do by cropping them around, playing with the lighting, etc. And then you have a large library of imagery that you could use on multiple components. Let's create multiple components and name them accordingly to help create a system for our images. I've named them image slash one, two, three, and four. However, you could name them just about anything. So if we drag our image component onto the card, you could clearly tell how much easier the process of changing an image has become. To avoid being too repetitive, I'll be doing the same thing here with the sliders. I'll make a few variants using auto layout and create a few components out of them with the correct naming using the same techniques that we've discussed before. And now we'll be discussing frames, auto layouts and constraints and how to use them in your designs because your designs simply do not exist in a vacuum. You will need to accommodate for different screen sizes and this upcoming method will help you out. You typically want everything in your car to exist in some sort of a frame in a way that makes sense to how things relate to one another. Press F or click up here to create a frame and simply drag a frame over it to wrap perfectly around the upper part of the entire card and adjust your card while holding controller command to ignore the inner constraints for now. Then give our frame the gradient color of this rectangle along with the stroke so that the container itself has the color and not just a random rectangle in the back. You can of course have the frame either clip the content within or leave it open, that's up to you. I'll give our frame some rounded corners to match our design and let's start setting some constraints. By default, constraints are set to the top left, but you could change that from this section here in the properties. I will simply select the heart within the frame and align it to the top right instead. As you could see, I could easily scale my frame now and the heart icon will always be aligned to the top right side with the same initial distance. Using this same method, I'll align the image to the center horizontally and vertically, and our sliders will be aligned to the bottom center. This makes our card easily flexible and resizable. Now let's have a look at other parts of the card structure, which contains the title along with other information. We're going to clean this up and make it scalable using auto layout instead of frames, because as mentioned previously, auto layout resizes according to the content automatically. When using auto layout, you want to shift into the mindset of how do elements relate to one another and start grouping down things that are closest together using auto layout and in the end, create a larger auto layout that holds all of the smaller auto layout groups together. I know that might sound a little confusing if you've never tried using it before, but I'll go through it now. So to start, I can see that the two different prices are close enough to each other to create an auto layout group. So I'll select both of them 
and press shift a since it's aligned to the center you'll see that the lines don't really align together anymore but you can fix that by going into the auto layout and checking the align text baseline option this number is closer to the title on top than it is to the add to cart button below so i'll create a new auto layout here with both of them selected and obviously i will put our plus icon and add to cart inside a new auto layout and finally i will select the button with the upper group that we just created and create one final auto layout that groups everything together finally we have this one simple group below however when we try to scale it you will notice that it doesn't really scale anything and that everything is just static this is the part in which you will have to go in individually and change the width flexibility mode of each auto layout including the text boxes you will want to first make sure that the outer auto layout is set to fixed width which means basically that it isn't really affected by the inner elements and change the title to be fill container and make sure that the auto layout containing the text is also set to fill container this allows the text to resize according to the size of the container but this creates a new problem when you have only two lines of text things will start to look a little funny and inconsistent when placed next to three lines of text but there's an easy fix to this problem and it's to set the height of the text container fixed height where you have three lines of text as a final step put both the upper and the lower sections of the card into a single auto layout frame so that you could easily scale everything up and down together and finally you can go ahead and create a component create an auto layout while having both of the sections selected and set the larger frame to be fixed and the inner frames to be fill as we've done before now that we're done putting things into auto layout and have one clean card we can go ahead and create our new component to start playing around with component properties so let's have a look at the labels here i want to have easy access later on to hide and show filters easily so i'll select the individual label called new and give it a visibility property by clicking on this little button next to the label here and give it a proper name such as new you can test the property by making an instance of the card and you can see the visibility property on the right side here as a radio button you can basically do the same thing with almost everything else in the component. I'll do the same thing for the sale label as well, but I'll do it while also selecting the crossed out number as well as they're both related elements. This could give you an idea on how you can link different elements together through a single component property. You could also create text input property to be able to easily edit your text out from the properties panel simply by selecting text and you will find the content on the right hand side which will also have a small button to create text property. You could also do the same thing for the price and the discounted price. To change the image component, select the image, create an instance swap property by clicking the button right next to the drop down list of the components here. And in this case, I'll call it product slash image. Now do the same with the slider and the hard components and we're pretty much done with all the properties. Create an instance of the main components to try all the properties out. So that's cool and all, but what if the product is actually sold out? You will need to create some component variants. Go ahead and click on the plus button here and create a new variant and we would want to add a new text in red that indicates that this item is sold out, which I will basically create and put inside of our existing auto layout and then I'll change the variant's name to sold out. What you need to do now is to hide all the things that you wouldn't need to show on a product that's sold out, such as the price, the labels and the add to cart button, etc. And you could do those things through the layers panel. Now if you change the variant from default to sold out, you will see that the properties don't really show because they are hidden in this variant. That is a quick way to make variants to products that are sold out, features, low in stock, etc. Let's put it all to work. Drag an instance of your component to your screen and start messing around with the properties and add some randomness to the design because in reality product listing is always random. We could use the help of Mr. ChatGBT here. Uh, hey chat, can you please help me come up with some random names for a record store of, um, uh, you know those old cameras and uh, yeah, so basically I want some random realistic product names to put on my mock-up. Thanks. And after a bit of negotiation, ChatGPT finally gives up and gives us some cool product names. Now, if you'd like to add a new image or anything, all you need to do is go onto Pexels or something like that and download the image, make it transparent, put it inside of Figma and use correct naming and set it as a component, which you will be able to easily find it into the properties. And that is basically how you could use component properties in Figma to streamline your design process, especially when you're working on large scale projects with a lot of cards. If you had decided that you'd like to edit an image for instance you wouldn't have to edit the image inside of the individual cards but only once inside of the image components 
the same concept applies for all the other inner components as well. That's it for this video, thank you for sticking around for this long, I really hope you found it useful. If you're enjoying Jam content, make sure to like this video, share it with other cool designers who would find it useful, and don't forget to subscribe for future Jam content. And let me know down in the comments what's the most ridiculous design feedback you've ever received. I really look up to your comments, although I might not be very consistent with posting, but my notifications are always turned on. As always, it's a pleasure to have you here, and I'll catch you later. Peace.